I love trying to complete games as fast as I possibly can. No, not like that. I'm talking about in the least in-game days as possible. Getting 80 million golds in the first year of Stardew Valley. Maxing all the social links in Persona 5. Beating Pikmin in just five days. Wringing every single bit of value you can out of every second that the game gives you. That's why I got so excited when I saw the demo for this upcoming farming game I was following was only going to limit you to seven in-game days. A small way for people to get a taste of what their farming game is like and get them hyped for the full release. But not for me. For me, I had just been gifted a golden opportunity. A chance to play through this entire game for absolutely free. All I had to do was get a little creative. To pull this off, I had to play Bye -bye. for hours, personally dig through the game's code, and even found two glitches that were so broken that the game devs had to personally ask me how they worked. This is how I beat all of Moonstone Island in just the demo. Before we get there, we have to start. What exactly is Moonstone Island? Moonstone Stone Island is an upcoming farming simulator meets deck building RPG. And yeah, there's been a ton of farming games come out in the past five years. I mean, a lot, a lot of farming games. Oh, okay. Okay. That's enough farming games. That, that's enough. But this is the first one that I've ever been interested in. So I decided to download the demo and play it on stream. You drop into the game and are greeted by your dad who gives you a way too long tutorial on how to grow crops. Then he lets you pick your starter. And yes, I'm being serious. Instead of there being regular thrilling farming game combat. The game has instead opted for turn-based deck building gameplay. So choosing the right starter here is crucial. Our choices are between this tiny little bee, this bucktooth sheep who looks like he says slurs, and a god dang dinosaur. And after doing some testing, I came to the conclusion that the dinosaur is definitely the best option. After choosing my new dino, I say goodbye to my mom, and with that, I hop on a broom to a new far-off island with the goal of becoming a world-famous alchemist. And apparently, no one told me at all how to fly this thing because several minutes later, I crash landed into this island and lose all my stuff. We get a 10 minute tutorial on how to water a seed, but when it comes to flying on a magic broom, they just pat me on the back and wish me good luck, I guess. So having crash landed, we only have two hours left in the day before passing out, with our tools scattered around the island. I assume this was added to the game to have the player scramble and then show, hey, if you stay up till 2 a.m., you will pass out. But not for us. For us, it's a free two hours of resource gathering. We immediately walk forward and pick up the hammer and our axe and start cutting down trees and smashing rocks. This is because we're going to need tons of stone and wood later. We're also looking to unlock a cavern entrance as they can be randomly stored inside of certain rocks across the island. Luckily, after much searching, I managed to find a cavern entrance and get almost enough copper to unlock the furnace recipe before passing out. And you would not believe it, but that was my 10th attempt of that first day. Now, you're probably wondering, how exactly do you beat a farming game anyway? Most of them are pretty open-ended and just serve to infinitely capture your attention, forever pulling you further and further deeper into their bisexual grasps. And while Moonstone Island is mostly the same, at the end of each day, they have this small recap screen pop up tracking your progress across the main aspects of the day. How many total spirits, you know, those Pokemon things you discovered, how many spirits you've tamed, any money you got from items you sold, and then at the top, it says Dungeons Cleared 0 out of 10. Yes, there are 10 dungeons randomly placed around this map, and I made it my goal to complete each and every single one. And they are hard. But I figured if I could complete all 10 of them, that would basically be completion. I wake up and apparently the local bar owner found me passed out and took me into her bed. She greets me as the new alchemist and tells me that I should go introduce myself around town to all the locals. If you go around town, you can meet your typical cast of characters that you'd expect in a farming sim, but we don't care about any of them. Like I said, we're here to beat the game and friendship has never been the key to anyone's victory. So on my first official day, I push them right aside and start scything down fiber in order to craft a balloon. You see, despite this game being titled Moonstone Island, there are actually a hundred randomly generated islands in this game for us to explore. And the only way to get out there is with our balloon, flying through the air, slowly painfully slowly. And the dungeons we need to find are randomly sprinkled throughout all a hundred. So I'll have to check every single island. Awesome. But luckily for us, the island you start out on is the only one not randomly generated, so there's always a dungeon in the same location that we can access. The dungeons in this game are very much in the style of Zelda. There's a ton of different puzzles you have to solve using your balloon, as it's limited to only being able to move forward. That and a combination of fighting some pretty hard fights will get you to the end to fight a boss. I solve some puzzles, take down some enemies, until I counter a Gemlin. And while you might look at this thing and go, wow, that looks like a standard weak first route enemy. Oh! <laughs> oh, how wrong you are. This little rock is an intense and vicious creature whose rage will single-handedly carry me to victory of this run. 
and also he's pretty cute. I feed some flowers to the Gemlin and add him to my team. I continue through the dungeon, making sure to fight every enemy I can for the free experience, as time doesn't pass during battles. After some maneuvering, I make my way to the boss, and he is level 6, and he has 126 health compared to my level 4 and 30 health, and he has a backup at level 7? This is looking bad. But I know that my superior intellect and years of- yep, and he immediately killed my starter on the first turn. So now I have to go through this entire battle with just my lowly level 4 with Gemlin. Now is probably a good time to explain the combat system in the game. Upon entering a battle, you get to send out all the spirits on your team, and you can also pull cards from each other deck. They all get shuffled into one big battle deck that you then use in battle. These cards say things like deal 7 damage, or discard a card and draw a card. Each spirit has armor and health. Health is obviously the amount of damage you can take before dying, and armor allows you to resist attacks. So if I use my tackle card, which is supposed to do 7 damage, against this mumbleweed with 2 armor, he'll only take 5 damage. Most of the game revolves around using cards to reduce your opponent's armor in order to stun them, and then deal more damage. So my first goal is to take out mumbleweed, and luckily for me, on my very first turn, I drew the perfect hand to do so. I use Bass to destroy his armor, and then play a card that doubles my damage called Rage. Using that, I'm able to kill Mumbleweed and do some good damage to the Anklo for just 3 mana. But Anklo responds by using a Rage of his own, meaning that he could one hit kill me next turn. I needed to draw the perfect hand to save myself, and actually they coded it wrong, so when it becomes his turn next, he just loses his status effect, making his last turn co completely useless. I shrug and use this time to destroy his armor and secure victory. And with that, we've cleared our first dungeon due to a coding oversight. We grab the chest with our ultra valuable moonstone and pray at this little tree to increase our energy. The day is almost done, so I go around town attempting to place my house down. Because if you pass out as opposed to going to sleep, you wake up at noon instead of 6 a.m., losing six valuable hours of gameplay. However, I guess you can't place your tent house on the main island for some reason, so I helplessly click around looking for a spot to place it until I inevitably pass. Out. All in all, not the best start to day one. We only cleared a single dungeon, our spirits barely got any experience points, and we passed out. If I was going to clear this entire game, I was going to have to seriously pick up the pace. I start day two off by heading back to the cavern I unlocked on day zero. We need 10 pieces of copper ore to unlock the furnace recipe, which is necessary to unlock the most important item in this entire run, the broomstick. So getting this furnace as fast as possible was crucial. I quickly mine up the nodes and then sell the ore to the blacksmith, who rewards me with said recipe. I sell off any other ingots or ore I managed to pick up along the way for a bit of extra cash, which I then used to buy several coffees at the saloon for increased speed. Then I head directly south. Through some continued resetting of the day, I had found that there was a dungeon not too far from me, so I'm able to head straight there and crack into it. I open some valuable chests to see if I can get a moonstone, to no avail, and encounter this level 5 mumbleweed who I decide to add to my team as its final member. By complete chance, all three of my spirits happen to be the earth type, which certainly won't be a problem, right? I quickly make my way to the end of the dungeon and start the battle with the boss. And luckily, despite his boss status, he's only level 6, while my entire party is sitting at level 5. So we quickly break through his defenses, and I have my tiny little Gemlin kill his own father with an attack. This was not necessary for victory, but I wanted to make sure that Gemlin knew that I was an authority figure to be respected. For winning, I'm rewarded with a bunch of money and goodies, including another Moonstone. I talk to the magic energy tree and exit the dungeon. Through my previously mentioned many many resets, I know that there's another dungeon directly next to me, which is extremely lucky as the dungeons are mostly scattered around the 100 random islands. I slowly balloon over and decide to place down my tent here. I also craft a furnace and smelt my three moonstones into a moonstone ingot. I'm gonna have to whip through this dungeon as fast as possible to get this done today, so it's time to put on my game face. I enter into the dungeon and I'm immediately greeted by three different paths. I choose the middle one because while I'm usually on the left, the middle one is safer for advertising purposes. And as I go through, I encounter my first enemy of the dungeon, only to learn that they are level 11. They come into the first turn and nearly straight up kill my little dino boy. But luckily, due to my years of Pokemon hyperfixation, I'm able to kill everyone without taking another hit of damage. After finishing that, I make my way over to the boss of the dungeon with just two hours left in the day. This time, the boss is a level 11 Gemlin, and he has two backup cronies, one of which is level 12. Mumbleweed, I don't know if you're gonna cut it this time. On the first turn, I bash both of the Hopstraw's defenses, stunning them for for the next turn and do a hefty hit against the first hop straw. If I'm gonna win this, I need to decrease their numbers as quickly as possible, which is why on my next turn, I make sure to take out the first hop straw and do a serious chunk to the next one. But now it's the enemy's turn, and just like the meteors did before, they obliterate my poor dino. Rest in peace.
Luckily, I retaliated a few turns later by taking out the level 12 Hopstraw, leaving just the boss. Gimlin wasn't too crazy about that move, so he takes the time to nuke my poor Mumbleweed from orbit. So now it's just my level 7 Gemlin with 20 health versus his level 11 Gemlin with 131 health. And who do you think wins here? That's right! That's the world champ difference right there! Greatest of all time, or maybe just indie game farm developers target their games to more casual gamers and make their games way too easy. Nah, it's probably the Shawnee Spice, baby! After increasing my energy at the magic tree, I rush back home and harvest my fully farmed moonstone ingot. And with that, I head to bed. I was able to accomplish two dungeons today, but that still means I have just four days to beat seven more of them. Upon waking up, which I get to do at 6 a.m. this time, I immediately head north and start looking for islands. I go a couple islands to the north and I find my fourth dungeon. By this point, I've realized that pretty much nothing in this dungeon is gonna help me reach my goal, so it's worth just skipping all the side rooms and heading straight to the boss. Using this strategy, I get to the boss just two hours after entering the dungeon. And by this point, my spirits are so leveled that they easily destroy this level 6 hopstraw. I would like to take the time to point out the major flaw with this battle system though, and that's that your opponent will always be worse than you. You see, while I get 3 mana every turn to use to divide to different actions as I wish, the enemies instead are given 1 action per spirit. Meaning that as long as you can take out 1 enemy, then you will always have an advantage on them, making victory much easier. I eventually reached out to the devs about this problem, to which they responded, You are the only person we have watched who has not struggled with the battling system. Which feels like less of a comment towards me and more of just an absolute dunk on people who play farming games like god damn y'all step it up regardless i take out the helpless scarecrow take some of that good branch and start looking for the next dungeon as i look around a ton of different islands i encounter a ton of different spirits like cool frogs and fish and throughout the fights there's one major thing that i realize anklo sucks in pokemon usually your starter is so good that you can just blaze through the entire game using just him but nope that is not the case here my giant ferocious looking dino is actually just a worse version of this geodude i found on route one. So with hopes of making space on my team for something cooler, I make the impossible decision to release my very own starter into the wild. Anklo, you were my best friend. My first partner. You carried me through so much. I owe this entire ride. Is that a fish tank with legs? That is f***ing awesome! Fishbow's influence quickly rained terror over my chat as people had to fight off the urge to submit to Fishbow's almighty powers at all moments. Cults quickly formed, dedicating to nothing else than to serve the mighty Fishbow. Those who do not submit to his mighty influence were casted aside. Fishbow's power scares me, and yet also intrigues me. I spend the rest of the day looking around for the next dungeon, but no matter where I searched, I couldn't find another one. What I didn't realize at the time is the first five dungeons are placed relatively close to the main island as almost tutorial islands, so finding any additional ones was going to require venturing far outside anywhere near here. And given the fact that my balloon moves at literally three miles an hour, it makes searching for islands a little difficult. Just, just a little difficult. Gold, you know? On the bright side, I do encounter this beach ball with sunglasses who looks like he cheats on his wife with a massage therapist and whatever the f*** this is. But to no avail, I find no new dungeons, meaning that I end day four with just four dungeons completed. Luckily, I was able to make it to the saloon though and rent a room for 50G, allowing me to peacefully sleep through the night. With just four days left to discover six dungeons, I was really starting to feel the heat. I start the day off by heading back to my home to receive the moonstone I had left there, allowing me to finally craft the broomstick. The broom, like the balloon, allows you to fly around to other islands islands. However, unlike the balloon, it is much faster and allows you to have free reign control of wherever you go, not just forever traveling in a single line. This comes at the cost that it does not provide infinite flight and burns through energy a lot faster. I decide to take my broom south and see if I can find any dungeons there, and eventually I find this weird teleporter pedestal that teleports me to an island all the way up here. Luckily for us though, this island has a dungeon on it, and before going in, I have a confession to make. Fishbow sucks. Despite his deity-like influence, water types are awful. While earth types rely on the special mechanic of triggering a state where you both deal and take double damage, water types rely on something called regen, which, you guessed it, regenerates small amounts of health. Woo! In general, in games like this, it's better to do lots of damage and not sit on the sidelines bearing restoring even a quarter of your health while your opponent wails on you in ways you never thought possible before. So I make the regrettable decision to release Fishbow back into the wild, and my chat was relentless about the mistake that I just made. The cult I created was now turning against me. I am scared. And with that, I take my fishless finger straight into the dungeon. Dungeon. Upon entering, I immediately realize something. This is a poison type themed dungeon, and you'll never guess the one type 
that poison is good against. And not only is my team weak to all of the attacks here, the enemies also greatly outlevel me, with my spirits being around level 8 or 9, and all the spirits in this dungeon being 11, 12, or even 13. I go through and fight the boss of this dungeon many, 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 many times over the next two hours, to no avail. Walk into the dungeon, try and avoid every fight I can, have my team extremely weakened, use all my healing items, go into the boss fight, die, repeat, over, and over, and over, and over again. No matter how hard I I try this stupid frog and his god dang poison beat me. Your next thought is probably, well, Sean, why don't you just release your spirits and recruit these new, stronger ones? Well, apparently, I have completely exhausted all nearby islands of any flax flowers, which are the game's main way of taming spirits, as they are nowhere to be found. I continue banging my head against this wall for hours upon hours, just desperately trying to squeeze out a win. But no matter what I tried, I just couldn't do it. I had failed. With the game's demo being taken off Steam in just two days, I knew that this was my last real chance to push as hard as I possibly could. I stayed up until one in the morning, resetting the day until I was practically passing out in my chair. But it didn't matter. I still ended up dead at the hands of that cursed frog. Tired and broken, I decided to end my stream. A failure. I knew that if I was going to complete this demo, I would need at least a couple days to investigate my save file for both ways to beat this horrid poison dungeon and also finding all of the other dungeons. And and was it even possible to beat all the remaining dungeons in the time I had left? I mean, I had only barely beat one of these herder dungeons, and I needed to beat six of them. I stayed awake until three in the morning off stream, just hopelessly putzing with my stave file, looking for something, anything that could help me. And that's when I discovered something so game-changing. I single-handedly broke this game on the spot. While flying around on my balloon looking for alternate dungeons to head to, I accidentally clicked the Organize Inventory button. And unlike other games, for some reason, this also organizes your hotbar. So while I was in the middle of the sky floating on a balloon, I had accidentally taken the balloon out of my hand and replaced it with another tool. Now you'd expect the game's response to immediately drop me down as I could no longer float without the balloon, right? Wrong. Instead, what I noticed is that I was still up there, floating straight, but I lost zero energy. I was beyond confused. Usually using the balloon makes you lose 1.5 energy per second, greatly impeding the time you're able to fly. But instead, with this one simple trick, I had discovered an infinite flight hack that was extremely easy to pull off, but what I discovered next was even greater. You see, like I said before, the broomstick is significantly faster than the balloon. Leagues and leagues faster. But there's a huge problem with it. The broom does not have a uniform speed throughout its flight. While it starts off fast, by the end of its flight, it moves mind-numbingly slow, which greatly impedes the distance you can travel, to the point that it's only worth really using the broom to go short distances. But if we're to charge up the broom to its max speed, then pause and use use the trick we learned before, this time replacing the balloon into our hand, we can truly destroy this game. By doing this, we forever preserve the starting speed of the broom, which allows us to traverse distances at twice the rate we normally can. Yes, it comes at the cost of having to both charge up energy before and using energy while in the air, but as long as you can afford the harsh energy cost, you can get anywhere you wanted way faster than intended. This was the saving grace that I needed. This was the secret to saving the run. I could go around huge chunks of the map in just a second. There was hope for me finding those six dungeons in just four days. But now that I had cracked open the secret to conquering the ever-ticking in-game timer, I still had one huge problem. Real world time. At this point, it was Friday at 3 in the morning, and the Steam Dome was set to be taken off the store at 11.59 on Sunday, and I had a lot of ground to cover. Even using this newfound broom balloon glitch, it would take hours to explore the full map. I would need to take the entire weekend to look into my save file to find these islands, giving me no time to actually complete my run. Despite my best efforts and literally breaking the game open, I was still doomed. Doomed to fail. A goal just outside my reach. Hopeless and desperate, I checked the Moonstone Island Twitter one last time. It's then that I see that I had a Twitter DM request, and it was the head developer behind Moonstone Island. He had messaged me and said that he was really impressed by my stream, and said that no one had broken their game like I had. He asked me when I was going live again, and I told him the unfortunate truth, that I just didn't think I had the time to finish the demo with only two days left. He asked me if I could beat the game if I was given another day, and I told him I was positive. And so, he got Steam on the phone immediately and extended the time of their demo to Monday at 11.59, a true 
miracle. But now, the pressure was on. Not only was my entire audience counting on me to finish this, but the dev team behind the game was watching upon me, and I didn't want to let them down. I spent all weekend exploring every nook and cranny of my map, exploring as much as I could, and then at 1.50 a.m., resetting the day and exploring another section. But after two days of prep work, I was finally ready. This time, I start my day five by going immediately up instead of down. Here, I found a beach island where the enemies are a lot lower level, the final tutorial island I had been missing this entire time. I skip any and all chests and head straight to the boss, and I'm able to easily take him out with the power of Fishbow. Not really, he didn't do anything. Now, with this experience boost I got from the first dungeon, I head directly left. The distance I have to traverse is pretty far, but by using the broom switch glitch, I can get there in zero time flat. I've already solved the puzzle of this dungeon a long time ago in my off-screen prep time, so I'm able to once again head straight to the boss, who's level 11, greatly outshining anybody on my team. But now, it was time to premiere my secret weapon, the card that I've been holding close to my chest this entire time. This time, it was actually time to use Fishbow. You see, Fishbow is mm, terrible, but he is really fast. Don't ask me how Fishbow with legs moves fast, just go with it, man. Also, he's very low level, so using the level ups I had gone before, I can quickly crank up Fish's speed to supersonic pace. In this game, the higher speed set is, the more armor your bash cards remove from the enemy. With all the speed boosts I had given to Fishbow, he's now able to remove four armor with just one bash. This allows me to crank through the armor stats of the boss, despite him having 11 whole armor. I had engineered my team so perfectly that I don't even take a single point of damage this entire fight. And that is the power of Fishbow, my friends. I used the remaining time of my day to head straight to the third dungeon. Yeah, that's right. This is a three dungeon day. I head straight to the boss, and once again, he's a level 11 Oaken. But this time, his sidekicks are 14 and 13. Oh, dear. God. Here is where we see my arrogance catch up to me. You see, I had put all my stats in attack and speed on my spirits, meaning their health was less than desirable. I had to make this fight as short as possible and take out the real threat. No, not the boss, this little hopping scarecrow. He stabs my poor mumbleweed in the heart, taking him out. This fills Gemlin with rage as he just watched his friend and his only companion die in front of him. His fishbow is an ethereal god. He enrages himself and does huge amount of damage to Hopstraw and takes him out. I guess the power of friendship can help us. I get it? From the beginning of the video. Remember, as I exit the dungeon, I've only got two hours left in the day, and I'm about to get all the way back to a bed as soon as I can. The closest one is the room at the saloon, so I haul ass to try and get there. It was incredibly far, but I believe with broom switch, I could get there. One hour left, and I'm nowhere even close. I start cutting corners on every single island, and somehow I miraculously end back in the saloon with just 20 minutes in the day left to spare. And with that, we have shot ahead, springing up to seven out of the ten dungeons complete. With three days to go. This gives us way more flexibility in completing this, making me feel confident that we can beat this. And all it took was finding literally two game-breaking glitches and begging the devs to keep their game out for longer than they intended, but hey, hey, we got here. And while my spirits were high, there was an impossible hurdle left standing in our way. The Poison Dungeon. Last time, I spent hours trying to defeat this boss over and over again, dying every single time, but not today. Today would be the day I finally overcome, as I had cracked the perfect strategy. You'll remember from last time that the the main problem I kept encountering is that the two members of my team, Gemlin and Mumbleweed, are earth type, and thusly, weak to poison. This made it extremely difficult to defeat him as all his attacks did double damage to me, so it was pretty obvious what I had to do. And that was release Fishbow. Look, I know I just said Fishbow was actually good, but if I tried to explain my full feelings on this Fishbow with legs, this would be a 15 hour video. Before heading to the site of the greatest battle known to man, I decided to test my strategy in a slightly easier poison dungeon that also remained. Inside the dungeon, I look for a high level spirit to replace Fishbow with, and end up settling on this frog that looks like the Casey Neistat tripod. For some reason, the boss of this dungeon only had one minion, and also she started the battle missing a good chunk of her health. And also, I think I'm kind of attracted to the mini shroom. Self-discovery aside, by this point, I've been able to upgrade Mumbleweed and Gemlin's cards to such an extent that my cards were beyond broken. This was a sitch. Things got a little scary when the boss used a super effective move on my dear Gemlin and killed him, but his sacrifice was not in vain, as we immediately take the mini shroom and beat the dungeon. With all the preparation out of the way, it was time once again to revisit the sight of my greatest blunder. My plan was to trust in the family that I had spent so long building. Their attacks had been upgraded so much, and their decks so thinned out that they were the best possible spirits for the fight. But as I took the speedy balloon over there, I began to doubt myself. This team has failed so many times before. What made me think it was going to do well now? Their poison weakness is so easily exploited, I'll, I'll never be able to defeat that frog. What was I thinking? I start panicking, and in a moment of pure fear, I release my beloved Gemlin, the 
one who had been there for me through it all, from the very beginning, and led me to victory time and time again. And soon after goes Mumbleweed 2. I convinced myself I had to make a new team to make this work. I doubted the abilities of my friends who led me here in the first place. I try to replace them with other spirits I find inside the dungeon, and while I do find one level 11 mini shroom, I can't find a single other high level spirit. And I'm forced to settle for a level 6 Trunkle. A uh, trunkle. What have I done? Where was my beautiful team? Now I've just got this stump with no eyes. Yes, they were resistant to the poison tax of the evil frog, but I haven't had the chance to upgrade any of their cards, and their decks were filled with trash. With only a few hours left in the demo on Steed, I decide to just run with it and enter in the battle with my worst enemy. Upon entering the battle, I'm immediately greeted by them killing my trunkle and dealing over half health to my ribite. Things are not looking good. Not to mention the developers of this game have entered my stream dissecting my every move. No doubt screaming at their screen at how stupid I was. The odds were completely stacked against me. Luckily, on my turn, I draw a card that applies two Tangle to an enemy, which means they can't play any skills, saving me from Ribite's Onslaught for a turn. I then break the opposing Mini Shroom's armor and nearly take it out. Since his Ribite can't attack, I'm able to stall until the next turn while I kill one Mini Shroom and stun the other, and the next turn finishing off the last one. Now the numbers were on my side. I sit there, prepared for victory, though unfortunately I cannot draw a single bash card to lower his armor. This gives the boss ribite time to straight up murder my ribite. It all came down to this draw. If I could just draw a bash here, I'd stun him for a turn and win the game. But if I didn't draw one, he would destroy me with a swift tackle to the face. It all comes down to this. It's time to believe in the heart of the cards. And believe I did as I draw a bash and able to finish off the stupid ribite. That's impossible! The greatest challenge of my run vanquished in an instant. I grab my rewards knowing only one dungeon lay left in my path, and I've got two days to do this. Despite the last dungeon being literally halfway across the map from where we just finished, I'm able to get there in six hours thanks to the broom swap glitch. I set up my tent there with the hopes of hopping into the last dungeon the second the sun comes up tomorrow. The sun rises and I head into my very last dungeon and make my way to the boss in only two short hours. I decide to let one of my spirits go with hopes of recruiting one of the side spirits in the battle, but who could be a final cool spirit to recruit and provide cool narrative conclusion to this run? <laughs> Man, I just can't get rid of this guy, can I? I recruit Fishbow one last time and start taking down the boss. He is highly defensive and his health regenerates, so he's gonna take forever to take out. But with only 18 damage taken across the fight, I easily defeat him. And that was it. My 10th dungeon defeated and the game effectively beat. It was not easy. In fact, it took hours upon hours of research planning and glitches, but I had done it. I had beaten this entire game in just the demo. Where most players are struggling to beat one or two dungeons, I completed all 10. I sat on the beach with a smile on my face and a sense of pride in my heart as I went to sleep. But didn't it all seem a little too easy? I mean, there wasn't really a climactic note to end on. I bet you were expecting this giant battle that would take the most strategic planning and pushing the game to its absolute limits, which is why it just made so much sense when Studio Supersoft, the devs behind this game, decided to propose one last challenge to me on my very last day. Across the time you've watched me play this game, I'm sure you've noticed all the different types of islands I've come across. You've got standard, beach, poison, forest, electric. There's even a fire island with high level enemies that I came across. But the most dangerous of all these islands were the dark dark islands. Not only does just walking on a dark island suck your health so quickly that you can only survive for a few seconds, but the enemies here are in the upper 40s and can easily kill your entire team in one move. The main dev behind Studio Supersoft told me that he has never seen anyone recruit a spirit from a dark island. Even more than that, he himself in all of his testing and knowing everything about the game has never been able to recruit a dark island spirit. That's how insane these islands are. The dev told me that if I could somehow manage to recruit one of those spirits, then he would personally design me a Shawnee Island that would appear in every single copy of Moonstone Island. And being a YouTuber, obviously, I'm extremely vain, so I couldn't pass up that opportunity. But it wasn't going to be easy. Even if I was able to find one of those two to three dark islands in my game, I need to get enough health restoring foods to survive. And even if I managed to get into battle with one of these dark island spirits, I'd have to survive multiple turns of their onslaught as I tried to recruit them. And since I'd have to recruit one, I'd only be allowed to have two spirits in my party, only further limiting my options. Luckily, the before the previous day had ended, while messing around, I happened to recruit a level 12 Cloud who looks like he'd be a little bit racist and a level 15 B, but these still wouldn't be nearly enough to survive the Dark Island onslaught. So I'd have to formulate a strategy and fast as the demo limit was quickly approaching. I started the day off by immediately heading north. Before getting to a Dark Island, I was going to need some stronger spirits. I head to an Electrical Island and find myself at level 25 Capacity, which was crucial to my run. You see, Capacity has 
has a special ability that when she dies, she comes back to life with 10 HP. This delayed death makes you effectively invincible for a single attack. And just like that, in just a couple hours, I was able to get myself a level 26 spirit. While trying to leave this island, I was actually stalked down by another bee, which I went on to recruit as well, giving me another level 30 capacity. I wasn't sure if it'd be enough because it would be very easy for the dark spirit to just kill them both in two hits, but I had to try. I searched for nearly the entire day and things are looking pretty grim. I come across tons of electrical islands and plenty of fire islands, but no dark island. I make sure to stop on all of the fire islands, which actively set me on fire, by the way, to pick up as many fire flowers as I can, as they work really well to tame spirits, and I was gonna need all the help I could get. I search and search and search and search, and I'm starting to think that I will never find the dark island, until suddenly, I do. Oh, Nelly. Okay, here we go. Here we go. But my celebration is cut short by the knowledge that my journey had only just begun, as now we had to actually get this thing recruited on our team. A dark puppet shows up, and it's level 39. I could not be more terrified, but the narcissistic thoughts of my own island bounce around in my head, and I head straight into battle. And then I realize I forgot to remove a spirit from my team. After a quick embarrassing flee, I head into battle, this time with just two bees. Now, you might think it's strange that in the battle, I was able to move first, despite being so underleveled. You'd think that level difference would lead to my speed being much lower. Well, that's actually because I caught on to an extremely unbalanced mechanic. You see, spirits can actually be fed crops to give them a small stat boost. Say, for example, you find a lightning plant. This would increase the speed stat of any spirit by three for an entire day. And I guess the devs were too focused on making the NPCs hot to realize that they put no limit on this per spirit. And so while I didn't have many crops, I did manage to pick up some lightning plants across all of my recruiting adventures and buff both of my spirits to all holy hell. But as I said earlier, this also extremely buffed my bash cards. I wanted to make sure that there was only one spirit out when I tried recruiting, or else I'd be suffering an onslaught from two each and every single turn. After stunning the Eureka, which looks horrifying by the way, I'm able to almost whittle him all the way down. The Pup Ox retaliates by using his own bash and completely stunning my stronger bee. The next turn, I only draw cards that can be played by my back bees, so I'm forced to sit there and do nothing as both spirits line up confirmed lethal attacks next turn. I work on my tame levels with Pup Ox in the meantime, but safe to say this is not the way I wanted to go out. I Click and turn and watch as I completely bungle my chance at getting an island. But as the two opposing spirits attack me, I survive with two HP. I realize now that there's no hope in trying to take out the other spirit. Either one on this exact turn or I'm gonna lose the whole thing. I just had to hope the fireflies that I had would feed this puppet enough right here. And well, oh, mm, easy. It's just too easy. I had done everything the game had to offer in just the demo, in a way so brutal that not even the own devs themselves could do. Wow, it feels good to actually be good at games for once, unlike all my other videos. And with that, the demo left Steam, closing the doors to Moonstone Island until its full release. But until then, I'll just be sitting here on Shawnee Island, waiting to break it again.